There was another noon game that had some recruiting implications. Let's get to this Florida State recruiting segment. I was going to ask you last week, Steve, if we could do the, is FSU going into a death spiral when it comes to recruiting? I'm glad we waited a week because now uh, it's certain after losing to Memphis 20 to 12, FSU is now 0-3. They lose the first three games of the season. And if you look at their schedule, I mean, this was the quote unquote easy part of the schedule. They make it out without a win. Uh, we've seen a few major decommitments, Myron Charles, most recently Javian Hilson, the edge from Coco. I mean, these were guys at the core of their class. Um, let's talk about who was on camp. We're going to dissect this whole thing. We're going to talk about it all. But first, let's talk about who was on campus for this one. TJ Alford, he's a major flip target. Daryl Johnson, I mean, if you watched Florida State's linebacker play, you can tell these were two guys of major need. They had a 2026 wide receiver committed to Miami. Also, Edge Cam Brooks made it in. Um, Steve, let's start with TJ Alford right there at the top, committed to Ohio State. FSU has a big need. TJ Alford from the state of Florida. Uh, but this visit, it... it Probably didn't go as well as it would have had FSU ended this uh, game one and two. Well, again, similar to what, what we talked about last week with some other teams, and maybe TJ Alford sees an opportunity to come in at Florida State and help turn this thing around right away. He's been good with them behind the scenes, um, likes the staff, and 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 has a good relationship with them. You know, Ohio State may be ultimately tough to beat for T.J. Alford in the end anyway. He was at Miami last weekend, so he's certainly keeping some schools warm. For Florida State, obviously they're in a – it's it's a tough stretch for them on the field. And that's why it was so important for LSU to win today because they could – you know, they could have quickly found themselves people talking about their program the same way people are all of a sudden talking about Florida State, which is just kind of ridiculous to me because Florida State won – the ACC last year and had an undefeated regular season. And you, if, if I'm Florida state, I'm looking at this season, like, look, let's see how we rally. Um, let's see how these kids continue to bounce back. But, you know, Jim Harbaugh had that, had that rough year at Michigan, made some changes on his coaching staff, got it back on track and won a national championship. Brian Kelly, yeah. Brian Kelly had a miserable four win campaign. At Notre Dame one year, people were calling for his head to fire him. He came back and ripped off four or five straight 10-plus win seasons, went to two college football playoffs. So he was able to right the ship. I mean – Yeah, I think this is a little different situation. I think the why? times are different. I think we live in a transfer portal era where – Where they've done a good well, job. Well, yeah, they've done the a great job. Players have gotten drafted. As far as like portal, NFL draft – Ties yeah, I see what you're saying, play but play. Steve, at the same time, you're taking all these portal guys and a lot of them were one and done. And mm -hmm. at the same time, they were missing on key high school recruits. Florida State was recruiting outside the top 10. Florida State needs to be, if they're going to play up to their level, they have to recruit inside the top 10, inside the top five to play at that championship level. So what I think what happened was you saw Florida State, for lack of a better term, living paycheck to paycheck really since 2021. And what happens when you live paycheck to paycheck, Steve? You can live that way. It's a well, tough way to live, but you can live that way. And when you're living paycheck to paycheck, you have zero air room margin for error. And what well, you're seeing now is Florida State kind of lost that magic in the portal this year. Maybe not every year, but just this year they lost that magic. But guess what came back to bite them in the butt? the fact that they've missed on really great players at the high school level and kind of said, well, it's okay because we have the transfer portal. Well, you know, that's great when you can land a Keon Coleman, but guess what? Keon Coleman's not on the roster this year. So not only do you not have his talent, but you're also missing that team chemistry that you build by building a core of, of great high school players. We just haven't seen one Florida State land them and two really develop at that level. Now, transfer portal, they've been hitting it out of the park except for this year. But when you're living paycheck to paycheck, this is kind of what happens. You can get a year like this. Well, sometimes you're only as good as your quarterback can take you. Absolutely. And right, and right now, there, you know, Florida State. Oh, you had, have, yeah, you had you key know. misses on AJ Duffy. You know, I, I pegged AJ Duffy as, hey, this is a really important recruit 
because he's going to be the guy after Jordan Travis, and he's going to be in your system for three years when you give him the ball. Well, guess what? A.J. Duffy was a miss by Mike Norvell. He's not there anymore. They had to go to the portal. They had to find a one. Now you got another one and done situation. You know, and obviously DJU hasn't been the answer with team chemistry either. And I think that you're seeing some of the results of, yeah, Florida State did great living paycheck to paycheck. They nailed it. They were able to pay their rent on time every month. Well, guess what? Rents do, and they don't have the money. Well, they were living at Broadway and Park Place for a little bit. And certainly Mike Norvell, he was up for the, you know, his name was floated around the Alabama job and, and, and those caliber of positions after last season. So he's going to be able to have an opportunity to correct this situation this season over mm -hmm. the next nine games. And in 2025, he's going to be around. So Josh, you know, Florida state as much as anybody out there. What well, is, yeah. yeah. What does Florida state do from here? In your opinion, where do they need to make some changes on the staff uh, on the field and, and in other areas? How do you see them digging out of this maybe this fall? And then what's their long term? That's I asked you two. two yeah, parts. no, no, no. It's good. I, I get out. it. And I think all there I think there's a lot of Florida State fans in the comment section with a lot of answers. Um, I think when you look at this team, I mean, you have to look at the top and how it's built. Uh, I think there's some blame to go around for the hiring of GM Derek Ray in the way that he's kind of implemented things. Remember. We say that DJU isn't the answer and that, they, that quarterback is one of the most key positions to fill, especially when you're bringing a guy in for one year. Remember, Derek Ray saw DJU up in person because they brought him from Oregon State. So he has the connections at Oregon State. He knows the personnel, the coaches, the everybody that's seen him. They still decide that DJU is the answer. DJU is not the answer. Well, the good thing about all this is it's a one-year reset. So as, as quickly as things can go wrong in the portal, things can also go right in the portal. And when you look at what they what needs to change, I mean, I think you got to make changes on the defensive line coaching staff. I think you got to take a look at your failures at the high school level and how those have come back to haunt you. And instead of saying, oh, it's okay that Armando Blunt, a five-star defensive lineman, flipped at the last minute from Florida State to Miami, it's okay, we'll make it up in the portal. Well, you can see their portal recruiting wasn't what it was last year, the year before. And I think that's due to teams catching up. There is no more finding a needle in a haystack like a Jared Verse at Albany, right? Georgia, Alabama, uh, all the big dogs are now doing that. So Florida State did have an advantage of the way that they recruited the portal early on. I think teams have caught up to that. Do they need to innovate? Do they need to find a new way? Well, you brought in Derek Ray. He's the guy, right? Well, He's the one that's got to turn this around. I think obviously Mike Nordvell has some serious coaching uh, issues that he has to look at, some development issues. I think at linebacker, development issues on the defensive line. Uh, you know, they they haven't been able to not only recruit the high school level, but develop the guys that they have gotten from the high school level. They well, you depended. said that they, you said that they need 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 to maybe make a change on the defensive line. Randy Shannon's obviously been around for a long time, linebackers coach. As the head coach, you're the you're the CEO. Obviously, it's up to make sure that every part of your right. program is humming. We just saw Lincoln Riley go out and two games in after he uh, retooled the defensive staff, and, and and Jim Harbaugh had to do that at Michigan too. Got rid of one of his good friends, Don Brown, changed the strength and conditioning department, made some major changes. Brian Kelly had to do that at Notre Dame too with his strength yeah. and conditioning department. Fire, hired new coordinators. Mike Elko went to Notre Dame, helped turn things around. USC, Michigan with uh, Mike McDonald to uh, uh, Jesse Minner, uh, all the changes that, that those programs made. Florida State certainly is looking at some wholesale changes after the season. Josh, when that quarterback portal or when, mm -hmm. when, when high school or excuse me, when the transfer portal were opened up for quarterbacks, I feel like Cam Ward was a name that was mentioned a lot around Florida State early right. on. Did they not go down that road? What do you remember of? Florida yeah, they State? definitely did. And kind of what happened was we were, there was a time when everybody in the media, we were all, you know, we didn't know what's Cam Ward going to do. We're waiting on his announcement. Oh, he's going to go pro. He's going to do this. Um, Florida State right, decided right. they were in on Cam Ward. I believe they might have got him on, in on the first visit. Maybe yeah, it was Miami. Yeah, you're bringing it all back for me now, too. Yeah. And what Florida State did, and this is why I think Derek Ray had a huge hand in this. They said, we're going to bypass the, we're not going to wait on Cam Ward and his decision. We're going to go ahead and take DJU right now. 
And I and you know they had to have intel that they believe DJU was the best fit, but obviously lacking energy, lacking that vocal leadership on the field. I mean, his demeanor, you know, he's so calm. He comes out and he plays it like a two out of 10, but it feels like the offense also kind of reacts at a two out of a 10 with their intensity. And I just don't think you looked at Jordan Travis last year, this, this, he saved that program so many times. And I think you needed a dynamic player like a Cam Ward in order to make this roster work. And a DJU just doesn't, he in within three games, he hasn't had that spark to get other players to play great around him. No question. Well, this Florida State class, people are flying around it. Chad Simmons was out to see CJ Wiley play last night, top yeah. 100 receiver from Milton, Georgia. Georgia's in the thick of that one. Auburn is, is looking to try and flip him. LSU, Georgia Tech, some of the other programs. Battling for C.J. Wiley. Dalen McCutcheon is a non-300 receiver. He's in our top 100. We talked about him in USC. USC is still keeping him warm. And Kevin Wynn, one of the most disruptive defensive linemen in the country, a guy that could come in and, and, and really be an instant impact player for Florida State. There's a lot of Georgia buzz around Kevin Wynn. Florida State was able to stem that tide after Kevin Wynn took his official visit to Georgia in the summer. Florida State got him after and then got him committed, but George is still hanging around in that recruitment. But I think Mike Norvell is going to have a little bit of a reset on his staff, obviously, after this season. But they got nine more games this year, too. But right now, that offense that's normally potent under Coach Norvell, explosive, is just struggling right now. And it's starting with the trigger man and going from there. Yeah, and I, I think this is a different case. You know, we just talked about South Carolina and the impact that, you know, their loss it still has on recruiting. This is a different situation. This is Mike Norvell in year three, having already lost two ACC games to start the season, now losing to Memphis, where you came from. And when we just talked about what they need to do to improve this roster, what's happened during these losses? Their commit list is being gutted from the most important players down to the least important players. I mean, we've already seen Myron Charles, defensive lineman, Javian Hilson, one of the best edge rushers in America. Now you're talking Kevin Wynn, another elite defensive lineman. The next player we haven't talked about is Solomon Thomas. He's a five-star interior offensive lineman that LSU's been all over, the Florida Gators have been all over, and he's going to be the next one that might look around and say, hey, why am I the only superstar here? So while I agree that Mike Norvell can make it up, I mean, they've got to take a few steps backward before they're probably going to move forward. Miami will be hovering around um, Solomon Miami, Thomas as well. Solomon yeah. Thomas as well. But let's bring in Hayes real quick uh, to talk a little bit about some of these decommitments. Hayes, you had – there he is. You had the Myron Charles flip news, JV and Hilson decommitment news. Do these guys give you much insight on why they backed off their Florida State pledges? Not too much. Um, when I talked to Myron after he ultimately flipped, he he told me that it wasn't anything that Florida State didn't do or um, anything along those lines. But he did say that even after he was committed to Florida State, Texas stayed on him, and he believes that their relationship um, continued to grow even after he committed. Um, but other than that, I, I really haven't talked too much with them about that. But with Javian Hilson, um, earlier this week, I put out a list of seven schools that he told me that he was going to um, visit. And Florida was actually one of those. He was supposed to be there this weekend. And I don't believe he showed up. Um, so that's something to definitely monitor moving forward. Yeah, we'll get there in a second. Um, Steve, any anything else on FSU before we move on? No, I just see them in a same spot that we've seen Notre Dame and Michigan in not too long ago, and they can dig out of it. And USC, to a certain degree, Lincoln Riley, for whatever reason, there's always a ton of pressure on him. There uh, is. But three college playoff appearances at Oklahoma, nearly made the college football playoff his first year at USC. I think it's not fair. Uh, but they're 2-0, and and they got to keep doing it week to week. But he revamped his entire defensive staff. And there's a different energy around that program. And I just don't exactly, know if that's Mike Norvell. That's the thing. I just don't gonna know. Be able we're going to find out because it's going to be a rough offseason. 
you don't go below 500 at a place like that and not make changes to your staff. So he's going to make, yeah. we've all been around college football and there's going to be changes to his staff and it ain't going to be in the corner office. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. FSU fans. Where do you go from here? Talk to us. What are the changes that you see that need to be made? What do you guys think about recruiting? I mean, are you shocked that this is the start for Florida State to go 0-3, most recently a lackluster performance again to Memphis, losing 20-12? to FSU fans, get in the comment section. Talk to us. Let us know how you're feeling.